Answering Your Questions Part 2 continued or Studio Update 2022 Part 2. Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan and I am just here to answer more questions on the comment section but also some that recently came up as I was answering throughout the evening and I would like to share them with you. So without further ado, let's jump right into the ones I would like to highlight for this live stream. And if you are first joining me for the very first time, wonderful. Thank you for joining. So far, I believe um, we have maybe all of um, no one right now, but someone will join and it's okay. So let's get right to it. Hmm? I am uh, right here. Good. <laughs> I... I want to say first thank you for many of your comments of consolation regarding my injury. I really appreciate that. I have, of course, been going through some um, problems concerning this, of course. As you know, I've had my surgery. Uh, one comment recently came my way saying, are there any specific instructions or warm-ups or strength exercises a cello player should do and obviously your grip and dexterity things of that sort i have found if you have suffered an injury like this i'm these days i'm stretching my hand as much as possible and i sleep with the brace keep a brace on as much as possible so i will be back to it another question that came to me was what was the song that that broke my hand and it was the legend of zelda and so i'll show that to you right now it was this exact song right here this song broke my hand and yes i'm going to have to record it when i am bet well and better and so if you're wondering where i broke my hand <clears throat> It was about right here in measure 25. I was doing these octaves, particularly right here, this reach from the one to the four, back to the one, right here. Um, this is what I was doing. And that broke my hand. That exact little, that part right there, reaching from the G to the C, back to the G. So that was, um. That was hard, but yes, I will record this one day and say I have slayed this dragon <laughs> because it's definitely a tricky bit right there. Like the song, it's the main theme from the original video game. So, I had a comment about that. Another thing, so let's go right into another uh, question I had. Very good question, by the way in the process of answering them came from Joan Roosh, which asked, all this can be accomplished in one hour. Concerning, it was a video, how to practice cello, part one, strategy map. And the answer is essentially yes. What we're talking about, if you haven't seen the video of how to practice cello, I suggest you watch it. But I'm going to show you this is the strategy map that I'm referring to. And yes, this is your one hour of practice. Do you have to do all of them in the process of that single hour? No. As I explained clearly in the video, sometimes you get to a phase and you stop. Sometimes you skip steps. This is for a one hour practice. Yet, Joan asks the question, is it possible to do all of these steps, all seven plus the three prior? in one single hour of practice. In other words, can you prepare, discover, warm up, work on fingering's rhythm, bowing dynamics, take the performance, the tempo to performance speed, play it through, and then find your happy place? And the answer is yes. You're absolutely right. I think, it's just my opinion and I'll apprehend, if you play if you come to a practice session and there is no warm-up, there is no discovery, there is no preparation, 
then yeah, maybe it's a little incomplete. For instance, when I pick a piece, I will definitely prepare. I'm talking for myself. I will prepare, I will discover always something new. It's probably not in this order sometimes if it's a well a piece that you well know. Of course, I will warm up playing scales or something in the key signature that is important. The fingerings rhythm dynamic and bow, and, excuse me, the fingerings rhythm bowing and dynamic will definitely be something I will also work on. I can w go individually of the two if I have an issue with that, just to you know make sure everything's a hundred percent. Can always do little tweaks here and there. And then of course taking that tempo to the right performance speed, playing the whole song through. And then of course at the end, or maybe during the entire process, looking for that happy place, that place where you are a musician and you are creating. And so yes, Joan Roosh, you can absolutely do this strategy map in the context of a single hour of practice. So good question on that. Another question I found, which I like to highlight, is Chris Cordell stating, and it was on the R Amazon cellos, worth it, in one of the conversations I had with Edgar Roos on the piazza there in Cremona. I bought my Chinese cello to, I brought my, pine, my Chinese cello to a luthier, and he threw me out. Another set it up, and it sounded beautiful. I am very sensitive to stories like this because they you know, come by constantly on my channel, in my studio, for the past 24 years. And honestly, I'm absolutely disgusted with luthiers who have this massive ego that they won't touch certain instruments. When they can build a, a relationship, they can build something with their client, a new client. I'm just disgusted with that. And there is too much and too many barriers of entry and too much ego in this world of classical music. It's just too much. I absolutely diametrically oppose to anyone, any luthier worth their weight in gold, looking at an instrument, a factory trade cello and saying, I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to usher you. I'm not going to help you come into this world. No, I'm going to sit here with my large ego and then see my bottom line go down because one day that person with that, you know, very economical instrument may become much more passionate about the instruments and may go to purchase a quality instrument. And where will that luthier be? And so I asked Chris Cordell, what relationship has she continued? Hopefully with the new one. So if you are ever thrown out, of a luthier because I don't work on those factory cellos bought online. They are not worth your time. Forget they have even existed and move on to the next one that will. There is always a luthier out there that is hungry and ready to help you and usher you into this world. Just remember, as a cello player, you stand here in the middle and in the Trinity, we have the teacher, which would be someone like me or your teacher at home. And then the, the second would be the ensemble, other musicians that you play with. The third part of this very important existence, and these are all relationships, is your luthier. Hence the reason I love to go see Edgar. We have a very positive luthier um, experience and relationship. Hence the reason I love going back to San Jose and seeing Jian Li, who made my bow. Again, positive, continued relationship. Because your luthier is not a transaction. It's not a one-off. It is something that goes on and on and on. And if you want to deal with somebody with ego, as Edgar Roos usually says off camera, there is plenty of competition and competitors aren't sleeping. And with one luthier, if you walk the streets of Cremona right now with a cello made in, on, made in China, bought off Amazon, you will have over 170 different luthiers that you can bring that cello to. Many will turn you down because they have egos, but one will see you, maybe even Edgar, and see the twinkle in your eye. And maybe years from now, I'll help you with that instrument now, and years from now, you will be coming back buying a master instrument from Edgar or some one of his colleagues, like Pasquale Sardone, like Vladimir Kubanzi. These are people that I highlighted in the recent tour I had with Edgar, 
with um, throughout um, Cremona because these are luthiers that will not turn you away. And if you're interested in more, learning more about Vladimir Kubansi or um, Pasquale Sardone, please check out the video of the tour that we did. I left the descriptions and one their websites and the and uh, one of the comments. I answered that comment there. So, Chris Cordell, I really hope that you find a better experience. And it's really a litmus test. You know, one day I'm going to do that. I'm going to take an Amazon cello, me, an Amazon cello, to a luthier and see how they treat me. I really want to see that. I really want to see that. There's plenty in the Bay Area. There's plenty across the world. Here in, where I live, here in France, I've had the exact same experience. Those, I'm too good, I'm too, I'm too, oh my gosh. Keep the ego somewhere else. There's too much in our world, so we don't need that anymore. Here's a great question going to the world of electric cellos from This Is Lance, two months ago, I know. <laughs> Some of these comments are old, but I think it's an important one. It was left on the NS Designs Wave and NXTA features and differences, the wonderful, wonderful, um, interview I had with Edgar Roos, I mean Edgar Roos, Ned Steinberger, oh my god, how can I mess up, that is Ned Steinberger 100% by the way, and I hope Ned you are doing well, his health hasn't been the best. So the question is, is it correct that the NS Design Wave that passes through a Focusrite Scarlett USB interface and out of studio monitors or headphones is completely viable for studio recording? Am I losing anything by not going for an NXTA or CR for this use case? And the answer is, is it viable? The key, question, the key point of this question is the word viable right there, viable. Is it viable? Like, is it passable? Of course it's viable. Um, is it enough? Of course not. It's going to need some treatment. It's going to need some, some EQ. It's going to need some a reverb. It's going to need a lot, especially if you're doing a DI direct input into your Focusrite. The Focusrite is a type of audio interface that I'll talk about in another video. So is it, is it completely viable? Again, the, the very in interesting choice of, question, of words are completely viable. I cannot say it is completely viable because there are other things that you would want to use for recording. Particularly if you want to do recording and you want to get a nice sound from your electric cello, then get an amplifier. I have some right here, can't really see them, but you should record out of an amplifier. You can also do a lot of adjustments through your various digital interfaces. I have an HX Stomp that will help you make that good uh, sound that you want. I don't know what type of sound you're making, whether it's something with effects, distortions, things like that, or just a more of a cello sound, so you'll be using an impulse response. But um, a complete viability through the Focusrite, if you want to do treatments of the sound post in your uh, DAW, then certainly maybe that's okay. But then he asks, um, this is Lance, am I losing, am I losing, anything by not going for an NXTA or CR for this use case. And I'll, I'll say, are you losing anything? No, you're not losing anything, but you will gain so much if you were to go with the NXTA or CR. Particularly CR has EMG electronics interiors, which I cover in the videos with Ned Steinberger. Um, so, and the NXTA is also a very quality instrument as well. Those are both instruments also made in the Czech Republic. To be mindful while the wave, the WAV, is made in India. And so are you losing anything? No, because all Ned Steinberger instruments are of top quality. And I would say the most basic Ned Steinberger instrument, the wave, is still head and shoulders above what Yamaha has provided, which is a great instrument, but it doesn't come close to what the Steinberger company has done. So you're not losing anything by going with a wave over an NXTA or CR, but you gain so much more when you go that direction. 
Okay, so I believe that is, oh, one more, how could I forget about this question from Jim the guitarist, left on the video, does your cello playing sound tinny? From Essential Skills. It's from the Adelaide Cello Camp that we had recently in June of this year. Jim the guitarist, thank you for your subscription by the way. If you like my videos and you like my live streams and you want to support this channel, subscribe, leave a comment, say hi, how you doing, things like that. So, Jim the guitarist, any idea of what the weight of these animals? Now, the animal he is referring to is this little guy and these two right here, I'm going to put them on my bow just right here. The animal he is referring to is this right here, these two. This is a, this is a sheep and um, chicken. I don't know where the, the pig went, <laughs> unfortunately. And there, respectively, the, the chicken is 13 grams. The, um, the sheep is 14 grams and the pig is 15 grams. And so, yes, they add a little bit of weight. And if you watch this video, which is really good, and I will make a more detailed video about this. These are little things you put on, a, on the end of your cooking pot to leave, keep the cooking pot open. So they're just made of silicone so they can be used for cooking and also cello playing. And so what I wanted my students to do is to place it to really feel that you needed to have a weight and presence on the end of your bow when you're doing that. So that's very important. If you, so, um, so yeah, chicken was the lightest at 13 grams. I weighed them today, 14 grams. And I'm just going to say 15 grams for the pig because it's the most robust one. I want to find my pig. I don't know where it went. It would be nice to know for you to make a video about the position of the bow on the strings, depending on how high and low the notes are in the, on the same string. That's very good. It's a simple. I don't have to make a video, but I will one day throughout. The higher you go on your fingerboard, the lower you descend. And it goes without saying, try to play a two octave scale on your D string and keep your bow in the same place. So right there in the middle. As you go up, you're gonna have one string, it's gonna go down, so I'm gonna do this. You have one string and as you're going higher and higher, that string is going to descend, but you'll have your A and your D string, and your A and your D string will stay at level. As you continue to play, if you don't move your bow down, because this is what's going to happen, if you don't move your bow downward, closer to the bridge, you will play the A and D string, particularly when you get past thumb two position. Thumb one, you'll definitely start to feel something. Thumb two, yes. Even in the fourth position, for those of you out there that need to service your instruments, you will feel that even maybe in fourth position, fifth, continuing up, you're going to find that your bow needs to descend closer to the bridge in order to not touch it if your, your bridge isn't um, formed nicely. So let's go to Looks like we have a person that's come here. Um, Ludovico, uh, hello, Rihanat, uh, Rihanna Zanati, and she wants a tutorial for Gior, Gior, Giorni Ludovico. So I love this stuff. I've, is, I don't know who that is. S tell me exactly the song you're thinking about, and I'll research it. That was a question that's just been asked right now here on the live stream. Thank you for anyone that has joined the live stream. Okay. And as usual, the live stream will end at the sound of the puppy making a fuss. I'm going to go back to answering these comments, which I absolutely, again, love doing. It's, it's, been, it's been wonderful, absolutely wonderful doing this stuff. And so I'm here. Um, I will try if you tell me which piece. There. Live chats, top chat, some messages. I don't know what that does. Okay. <laughs> Live chat. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Again, I'm just here answering questions. If you have any comments or things that you would like to talk about, then 
Fire away, I'm here. I would do this for about an hour and a half and end. For those of you who watched the last live stream, I do appreciate it. It was wonderful, all of your comments. Thank you. Woodside Story just recently commented on the last live stream. Very happy to hear you from you and wish you a smooth recovery. Thank you for all your amazing work on your channel. Well, thank you so much. Camel Electric on my How to Play Mozart Romance from... Um, mm -hmm. Camel Electric, fabulous. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. A small detail. It's called Eine Kleine Nachtmusik, not Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. So I'm um, clearly I don't speak German. Je parle un petit peu français, pas l'Allemagne. So <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I didn't know the the Nachtmusik. So <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I love our world. There's so much ego. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Well, thank you, Julie. Julio Cardenas. Thank you. I think in Iraq. You know, but you, you guys rock too. You really do. Hello, Anne Lam from Hong Kong. Hello, Anne. Hello there. Anne. I love how my students on the eastern side of the world or on the Pacific side of the world tune in. I used to have a student from um, Hong Kong before everything, well, you know, went crazy. And it was a good kid named John. He was a good kid. I really liked him. Learned about, a lot about Hong Kong. And another student also from Hong Kong as well. She was half French. Cool. Good people in Hong Kong. Sophie. Hainson wants to know on the Cello Coach app, is it available for iOS? And yeah, I say yes soon. Some questions have been given concerning this, uh, my Cello Coach app. I'm not going to show it right now because it's going to break on me and probably embarrass me again. But we're working on it. And if you want to be a beta tester, send me an email. Maybe I'll get my engineer more motivated to get a better build in the near future. Gabby Rojas wants to have the sheet music from Twilight Saga, The Meadow. Now, a lot of you sometimes ask about um, the sheet music, and I, of course, provided very, a lot of them, on my uh, MuseScore. Just look for me on MuseScore, M-U-S-E-C-O-R-E, -E, and you'll find a bunch of my scores I provide for free. Unfortunately, I cannot share anything with uh, copyright. And so there will be available on a later date on a different website. So, but if you so want to, Gabi Rojas, have a copy of that wonderful piece from Twilight Saga, uh, The Meadow, send me an email. So send me an email, please. And when I say send me an email, be aware that I work a lot on these scores, hours and hours on these scores. And then I present them to you with the fingerings and everything. So when you ask for something, don't expect it to be free. You can certainly talk to me about it. But expecting so many things to be free, well, I will. Hmm. <laughs> Gasparro Celloman, two months ago, asked, do you still use your Tunis Wolf Tone Suppressor? I still have it, yes. Do I still use it? At current moment, no, because I have the Trends modulator, which you can see just behind me on my cello, right? Well, can't see it right now, but it's right there. I use a Trends modulator. I don't use a Tunis at the current moment. I have it in my possession, and sometimes I go back and forth. It really depends upon the day, and sometimes I place it on a student's cello. So, at times, at times I do. Yet, I prefer the Krenz. A very interesting, recently today I was answering comments. The son of Mr. Krenz, Jesse Krenz, said, said thank you for, you know, talking about my dad's, you know, wolf tone suppressor. So, if Jesse, if you're ever watching, I would love for your father to, to and you and him and he, 
him and I <laughs> to sit down and have a conversation. That would be wonderful. Gasparo has another question here. I do exactly the same with on the Wolf Tuner by Andre Tunis. I do exactly this setup with my 7 gram new Harmony Wolf Tone Eliminator. 18 millimeters from the bridge on the C string and with, a, and with the slot towards the bass side. And I get the same result at the fraction of the cost. Good point. Interesting. Good point. I would like to, you know, what's interesting about the, um, the, in, in, interesting, interesting, uh, dot, dot, dot. What's interesting about the placement and the usage of Wolf Tone Eliminators, there's Eliminators, there's Suppressors, but the Tunis um, Wolf Tone Eliminator is not an Eliminator as much it is a tuner. He wanted to make a diapason, which is a tuning fork, as if you were to take a tuning fork and then direct the extra vibrations you're getting from your cello in a positive way. It doesn't suppress as much as it tunes it. It allows it to sing. So you're not necessarily, you know, suppressing or eliminating the wolf tone. You are tuning it. It's very interesting. Check out that video, The Wolf Tuner by Andre Tunis. He's from Belgium. Robert Port, uh, thank you for your subscription on my Near My God to Thee video. Thanks for hearing your testimony and thanks for listening. Sometimes I do Sacred Sundays uh, videos concerning songs of a sacred context. And yes, I had a testimony and I did testify. So amen to that. Don Ozuna. Watched my cello bow hold for beginners and said this method works. Well, thank you. Glad it helped. Glad it helped. Steve Branch says, seeing your fingers up close is so nice. This is on the video, How to Play Without Squeaking Left Hand Tips, Part 1. And it is my pleasure to help. Hmm. Hope the sound sounds good right now out there for everyone. We have a video, excuse me, a, a comment from Jane Doe two months ago. I'm sorry again. <laughs> Jane Doe, literally I came here to make sure what, what side the battery goes. This is on the video of electric uh, cello and Amazon review, oh, the red-headed bastard, the bastard, red-headed bastard stepchild. I don't know. This is that. I'm just happy to have a cello after 20 years today. I just don't even care how low quality it may be. Thanks for the view, review video, and it's important. It's it's stories like this, you know. Stories like yours make all the difference. Don, well, thanks for sharing. That is a cool thing about this channel because the stories I do get are nice, they're authentic, and they come from all over the place. Lucy thought the, the Outer Worlds original soundtrack cello choir cover was emotional. So, I'm glad you liked it. On the watch this before you buy or rent a cello video, which I made, gosh, five years ago. Hi, greetings from Mexico. I am a beginner, 66 years old. I want to buy a cello. Do you recommend the Yamaha brand? Thanks for your YouTube channel. And yes, I do. Yes, Yamaha, ya -ma ha makes 
good electrocellus, if he's talking about the electrocellus. I cannot not recommend Yamaha. It's a great instrument. Such a great instrument. Oof. This is going to get a, a bit thick. Um, on the Hendrickson Bud 10 amplifier for Electrocello, that's this amplifier that I have right here. Fantastic amplifier. Um, wonderful question, a comment from John Klimek, Klimek from three months ago. It's a great question because he says, been down this road for decades on a nylon string guitar. And he used a Daughterless cabinet with a Grace Design Alex. And there's a lot of ter terminologies in there that I've never even heard. Awesome preamps, especially for piezo pickups. He sold that. Now he uses an HX Stomp modeler like the one I have, a Power Cab 112 for Jazz Electric. And for his nylon, he could go with the Grace Design, the Stomp for Reverb, and the Power Cab 112. I don't know what the Power Cab 112 is. Hmm. See, I'm always learning things. And he's got a guitar, a piezo um, archback uh, guitar for his um, cover, for his av avatar. So you learn a lot. And when you want to get into electro cello, you want to talk to jazz guitarists. They're the ones who know. So. He says, we're totally correct on electric amps. Fender amplifiers have a distinct sound, a glassy tube sound. And even for jazz, it's not a classic jazz tone or a tone I want to use for jazz. It is actually gets irritating, and I absolutely agree with that. Marshall is the same, but Fender particularly has, I can't put it anywhere better, a glassy tone when you're looking for warmth and wood tone. And those amps are made for a very, very electric, you know, tone. So again, those amps are really shine with, um, uh, w with the magnetic pickups. They're like humbuckers, typically things you found on electric guitars. So, yeah. He uses a Roland JC112 model, um, uh, or the Archetype Clean on the Stomp. Got to check that out. Don't know what that is. The JC-112 sounds exactly like the JC-112, I mean, or 120, but have to fatten it up a little bit with the IRs, the EV-12 or the JBL-120. Lots of, lots of uh, jargon coming at me in that one, and I learned something today. <laughs> wow. Yes, it's... Uh, the world of electric amplified is such. Anne Lam from Hong Kong on the live stream, thank you for your comment. How long do you think it will take a learner to learn the Bach six suites? All of them. That's a good question right there. It's right here on the live, um, live stream. The answer is perpetuity. <laughs> the answer is you never stop learning. You never, never stop learning. You evolve with it. The box suites aren't just something you, you pick up, you learn, you put away. You evolve with them. It was Pablo Casals that once said, he was asked when he was elder, as he's like, well, did you think you, and Pablo Casals is the one that has reintroduced the world to Bach, the unaccompanied suites. And he was asked, do you ever think you have, do you think you've mastered the suites? And he's like, no, I haven't. Every 10 years or so, I pull them out and I relearn them. Now, if the master Pablo Casals can say that, what do you think you and I? Of course, we're always playing it and learning it. Um, Yo-Yo Ma is the same way. Every time he pulls out one of the box suites and he plays it, and that is his specialty, he says he always learns something new. It's a very introspective experience playing an unaccompanied suite by Bach. And one day I'll go into greater depth onto why the six suites are such a quintessential piece 
of, of, of work, a body of work for us cellos, cello players to learn, to learn, the con to learn what humanity is all about, to learn human nature. It goes a lot deeper than you could possibly imagine. But if you know the story of Bach, and you know what he was going through throughout the entire time of composing the suites, it is a very poignant, true, and human story. And you get to experience the joy, the, the, the misery, the heartbreak, the reconciliation, and the hope that this man ex uh, went through, through his unaccompanied suites. So, a lifetime is the real answer. If you want to be more technical as to how long it would take, if you committed your entire time to only learning the box suites, so you just have some key signatures to learn, it wouldn't be difficult to technically learn it. Uh, originally, uh, last live stream, somebody asked, technically playing versus emotionally playing. So technically, you could get through everything, but to bring forth the clarity, the color, the, the textures, the, the spirit of what is intended in the suites and all six of them, they're very completely different suites. And yes, it takes a lifetime and we're still discovering things today. Hope that helped. So Dave says, Eres un excelente instructor. Gracias. Well, muchas gracias. De nada. Daniel Bellic on the, the sound of electric cello, NS versus CR. What is the better one? The low F or the high E cello in terms of usability in sound? And that's a good question. It depends on where you want to go with your electric cello playing. I prefer to have the low F because it's a much higher quality string. I have an E string right here, a Larson E right here. I strung it onto my cello, my five string cello. It leaves a lot to be desired. So low F is a lot cooler than the high E. So of course I will say go with the low F and call it a day. Low F all day long. It's simple as. Raise and see on the video, cello bow hold for beginners. Thank you so much. I started in the fourth grade and I'm in the eighth grade right now, but I want to recalibrate my bow hold, which is currently so tense. This video is helpful. Well, I really appreciate you leaving that comment. Raise and see. Three months later, I say thank you. Glad to help you. You know, it kind of brings me to another, another little quick story. One of the reasons I, I mean, people ask me how long I've been teaching cello since 1997. I was 17. Do the math. Just, what is that? 25 years? 25 years? Yeah, around there. 23 years. <laughs> 25 years. And I was given an entire 10 cellists in a middle school orchestra and none of them had a teacher and the two uh, first one first and second chair did but the rest there was 12 10 of them did not and i was the guy coming in 17 year old student from a very nice orchestra in high school coming in you know, teaching these kids and so a lot of the kids have been sort of left behind and that's what happens actually when you go to middle school when you go into the middle years of your training a lot, of, a lot of you get left behind if you're not of top caliber. I was that person that came in there that said, hey, yes, I will teach your students, and certainly I will help all of them. And I, that's who I am. That's what I like doing. So it really helped me. Phantom Citron from three months ago on how to play fifth, sixth, and seventh position. Hello, I'm going into my high school soon, and I'm trying out for chamber orchestra. I haven't had 
much experience with those positions, although I have played them before. This tutorial was really helpful, and I hope to make it in. Best of luck. Again, this is the whole purpose of the channel, is to have to help you, to supplement your experience, your live in-person lessons, well, last couple years, online lessons. And I'm sorry for all those students out there that have instructors that don't know what it's like to have, you know, quality teaching. Not everyone can be, you know, the cello coach with all this stuff. So, <laughs> not everyone has been doing this as many years as I have and invested as much money, time, and effort into online lessons as I have. I may be the only one. There may be other ones, but everything you see is me alone. Anyway, I hope you get into your chamber orchestra. I really do. There's a question here. Please, what is the name of the music you play? On this one, I don't know. On during which part? I can't listen to it. I don't know. That was on the Too Much Rosin video, which is a funny um, video because I did rosin my cello too much, uh, by bow too much. Yeah. Jennifer Douglas on how to play without squeaking, part three. We play wood. Very helpful. I don't see this type of information for beginners elsewhere. Well, my happy to help. On the last Unicorn Cello cover, Rebecca Gillis, three months ago, left a comment stating, So beautiful. This is my favorite song, and I'm new to cello. Just taught myself by ear what I thought were the first couple lines. Cool to see it done right and so beautifully. Well, Rebecca, I appreciate your... For those of you who are unfamiliar with that cello cover, the last unicorn cello cover, there was an animated movie in the 1980s called The Last Unicorn. The band America, I think it was America, um, did the soundtrack. It's not Disney, but it's a beautiful, beautiful movie. And the music is really beautiful too. It's nothing like Disney. It's really good. So check out The Last Unicorn cello cover. Lots of praise, thanks, thanks, from Luciana, Cristina, on some videos here. Lots of clapping, taking off, thanks, thanks. Every comment, every single comment, if I may get an answer. On the neurology of deep learning, cello coach talk, Franklin Domain Altuna Marcano, subscriber, thank you for your subscription, stated, you are very welcome in my studio. I appreciate, I, I appreciate it. And for those of you who maybe watch this or find these videos, subscribe. I'm going to do more. I will do more. I don't, you know, honestly, I don't deserve it, but um, I will do better. You guys are inspiring me to do more, do more. And gosh, I haven't, uh, you know, read these, and some good stuff is here. Avun Kular 214, three months ago, on the BAM Classic Case versus the BAM New Tech video, came here to say I had one of those Boblock cases in the 90s. Oh, yes. So did I, and they were heavy. <laughs> yes, um, for those of you looking for a hard cello case, if you were alive in the 1990s or 80s or anything prior to that and you were playing cello, there was a time where you got good enough to get a nice, you know, a nice, a, a nice cello. And you would come to school with this Bobolock, it was a black case, and it was, had this uh, sort of this uh, mar deep maroon, almost bordeaux, um, interior, velvet interior, 
They were made of wood particle board and they were super heavy. They had no wheels. You carry them, but it was a mark of somebody who had a decent instrument. And if you came to school with that, that means you were serious about cello. And everybody had the same case. And then one day, BAM came out with their composite, you know, molded instrument case, and it changed everything. It had wheels, and the rest is history. Now you can get all sorts of different cases, Eastman cases, great ones from China, and of course, BAM, which is my favorite, made here in France. All right, we're going to try this. Uh, we have Marlene Marchado on the Blood Ritual Moonlight Serenade. She says, Oi, oi mor, mozo. Oi mozo. Um, podes disponi, disponibilizar a, partit, a partitura. Quero tocar ao ata, atardecer. I believe that's Portuguese. And um, I'll have to say, send me an email. <laughs> so, Google Translate, here we go. <laughs> That's what I love about this, this world. It's always been one of, please send me an email. At the time, por favor me envíe un email. That's Portuguese? That's Portuguese. Okay, there you go. Maya Fresenet says on the cello bowl hold for beginners, thank you so much for this video. I've completely forgot how to hold my bow properly over the quarantine, and this is so simple. Glad to help you. on how handle you with care your cello bow video and lord white slayer from fug states meanwhile two cellos going through bows like no tomorrow yes they put on quite a show they do to see all the bow hair get broken and stuff it's quite a show Oh, we have a comment from Stefan Hurst here on the Tom Play with an electric and acoustic cello, a video I made, an honest music review. So, apparently, Tom Play apps should be avoided according to Stefan Hurst. Tom Play never refunded if dissatisfied, and if they take a wrong renewal subscription, the app does not permit management of subscriptions, not able to turn off the default auto renew. Tom Play, store your payment details and debit without notice all existing users should contact Tom Play to turn off auto renewal. I think uh, Stefan that you should definitely contact Tom Play prior and state these things. I have never had any problem with Tom Play, neither has any of my students across the world. So this may be a situation. Of course humans run these companies, but Tom Play is by far the best option for you to play music when you don't have an ensemble because they're recording a lot of these pieces with a real orchestra. So I still, I, I, I hear you, yet I have had nothing but positive experience. And all of my students, too. And, you know, these are anecdotal things. Things happen, and people online make comments and maybe not necessarily tell the whole story. But from my perspective, when I've promoted this app and I've had 
at, I mean, in my personal studio, I have over 20 students using it on a regular basis for years, and they've never had a problem. And when they cancel and they, they come back on, so sometimes they have that, but it's not a problem. So sorry that happened to you, but I'm sure if you ask the right questions to Tom Play, they will respond and help you. They're a good company from Switzerland. Mother's Gurry, wow, just starting, and this was so helpful. Thank you. That was the first position on cello, basics of cello. Glad to help. Go sneeze. <laughs> There's like a little hair flying in the air here. ZVJ42, watch this before you buy or rent a cello, basics of cello. I was looking to buy a white cello, partly for decor decoration, but also because I wanted to learn how to play one. If I can ask, what's wrong with painted Cecilios, or painted cellos? Does that hurt the sound? If that is the case, would you recommend I just have that one for decor and another one for actual playing? Honestly, it depends upon your budget, ZBJ42. Uh, your cello wants to resonate. When you do, for instance, it's called like the clear coat, when it's a lacquered cello, and they look really nice and shiny and have the really nice lacquer on it. You can see them on Amazon. But it's what we call them, we call them lacquer cellos. And the same thing with that painted cello, you, it's a lacquered instrument. It's going to take a lot of that, that sound and just cover it up like this. Now the sound still sounds good, but it's going to be always covered. No matter what you do, you're going to have a limited sound. So if you like talking like this, then certainly you can still understand me, but it will never have the clarity of an instrument that is properly varnished at a luthier. But given that, if you want it for decor, go right ahead. Cello is a beautiful looking instrument. And I'll do that. Sure, buy one for decor and another from your local luthier. I should say luthier, but I say it's just luthier. I just do. It's luthier. So many people butcher that word. <laughs> Cristiano Silva. Hello, Cristiano. Welcome to the stream. Do I, um, do I teach in Brazil or is there learning Brazil? How, what method you use for beginners? Well, Cristiano, to be simple, learn your scales first. Learn to create a good tone first. Mm. Play the Hello, Cristiano. Uh, I use Suzuki books. That's good. I use the Essential Elements books. I use many of the books. My suggestion to you is to start with the basics of learning your scales, learning Ré majeur, learning Do majeur, Ré majeur, Sol majeur, Fa majeur, all the Do, Ré, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, your Solfeggio. Learn that first. Learn to create a good tone and begin with simple songs. That's my best I can help you with right now. Whatever is available in Brazil. Brazil. Nick Johnson, very helpful, on the Aya Breve, cut time versus common time video. De nada. Cristiano. Okay, Nick Johnson, well, you're welcome. Or, welcome. Cut time is Aya Breve. Not call it cut time, it's Aya Breve. Fernando Diaz, thank you for your subscription. 
is there a way of how I can buy the sheet music from the Apocalyptica Nothing Else Matters? And yes, you can. Send me an email. And when you do send me an email, I ask for a donation of any amount that you find fit, and I'll give you the score. Simple as that. Marla, you are so clear and helpful. Thank you. On the Choose Your Best Fingerings for Cello Essential Skills video. And I worked very hard on that video, the Choose Your Best Fingerings for Cello video. So you're very welcome, Marla, because, man, I worked a lot on that. You are very Adams Mateo on the how to replace cello strings video stated, I'm here because I accidentally popped someone's cello string and I don't want them to be back before I fixed it. <laughs> I love this stuff right here. He left another um, comment on another video, how to replace strings. I have the two of those. Um, and Adams, <laughs> Adams Mateo said, um, oh, the same thing. He says, I'm here because he pops someone C string. He doesn't want them to know. I'm fixing it before they come back. I don't even play cello. Good luck. I <laughs> uh, love this stuff. Yeah, it's not easy. Like, oh, just broke a string. Oh, I gotta go buy a string. How do I do this? Go online. How to replace cello strings. Oh, here's a dude with long hair. <laughs> it's like, talks really weird. <laughs> Okay, and how did it go? Follow up. I know it's three months later. Hope Adams Mateo is still with us. Barn Beast Petit on the 7H cello presentation in comparison with Edgar Roos. Just switched uh, my student 4 4 rental with a much better older 7 8 and I really miss those lows. Not as boomy and bassy anymore. And it's important that we do realize that sometimes, yes, you might lose some of that, I guess, bass sound per se, but it's so minuscule. And it depends upon how, how that instrument was made and it just because it's older, it doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Maybe you need to take it to Luthier and have it adjusted. And for your playing style, you need to play it with Luthier. Every time I go to Edgar Roos and I play my master cello, which is, you know, a cello that he created, he always discovers something that could be adjusted and made a little bit better. So that's why it's a relationship with Luthier. Okay. Hmm. So visit your... Luthier. On the 7 8 and update me, please. Okay, here we go. Here's Italiano. <laughs> How to play in fourth position. Domenico Farnocchia. Se il migliore peccato c'è non fa video in italiano. Faccio fatico a sicurità. Oh, here we go. Okay, and I'm back. She gave me 59 minutes of silence, so 
thank you for the 59 minutes of silence. Uh, it's going to be coming to a um, prego. <laughs> so, I need to learn Italian. Lauren Borges thought um, my, the same video, by the way, on how to replace cello strings, which is, this is the great thing about YouTube. Lauren Borges, I made a video about how to replace strings on a cello. You just heard me save Adams Mateo's basic skin. Uh, and he doesn't even play cello, so he's not even a beginner. And he said the cello video really helped him. Yet, Lauren Borges, says is apps the same video is absolutely useless for a beginner but it's a great commercial well your sarcasm is thoroughly appreciated your sarcasm is thoroughly appreciated And that's the thing, people live in their own little bubbles of reality. When you're from my perspective, and I put a video out there, and I'll get a good 80%, 90% of people saying, this is great, this is helpful, thank you very much, from all parts of the world, beginners, intermediate students of the sort, even non-musicians, as you just witnessed with Adams Mateo. Yet the single person has to come up and state their point of view, and that's okay too. Remember what I talked about, ego? In our world, again, it's okay. It's okay. It's just one of those things, you know. I take it all, positive and negative, and that's a wonderfully negative comment. Is it easy to do this on a 16th millimeter at, seven, at 70 degrees? I don't know. Could you explain? Explain, please. I don't know. Just some of this, please. Is this easy to do this in 16ths at, oh, about 7 BPM? Explain more, please. I think he's wanting me to do the chromatic scales video. I think he's wanting me to do um, something I honestly don't know. Let's continue with Thomas Stilp. Thank you for your subscription, Thomas. Captain Jack Sparrow, is that you? And that was how to play somewhere out there on cello at times, uh, verily. At times, I am a bit jack. <laughs> anyway, Jamerson Bryan says Yamaha hates this man. You know what? Yamaha doesn't hate this man. This was on the CR cello five string electric cello review video I made. I want to tell you directly. Jamerson Bryan, even though I can sense your facetiousness and it's, it's kind, I have sold many Yamaha cellos because of that video. Many. I've had luthiers and retailers from all over the world tell me, oh, by the way, this person came in, whether it's Australia, whether it's Taiwan. I had a student that bought one in South America, three students here in Europe. I had multiple students in the United States some in Canada it's so can you say that Yamaha hates this man I have sold so many of those cellos and not a single penny has ever come back to me but I've made hearts happy that's all that matters sold many and the vendors love my channel yeah, just recently I was in Adelaide, went to Size Music there in Adelaide. If you're in Adelaide, Size Music, great luthier. And when they, they saw me and I talked about my channel, and they went and said, oh yes, your video on the Yamaha is a good video and we like to show it to people when they want to get a very basic understanding of what this instrument is all about. So, yeah, I just like making people happy. Uh, Ann Lippert on the same SV, SVC 210 silent channel, is it worth it? Asked, 
What a pretty sounding instrument, but where is the silent part? There was no silence. Mm -hmm. I think if you continue and fully watch these videos, <laughs> you will fully understand um, the whole context. I don't make a video and leave a very little, leave little information out. So it is a, um, it is a great, great, um, it is silent in a sense where you put your headphones in, something like a single-sided headphone like this right here. Briar Dynamic, if you don't have this, this is the only one you should ever use, is the Briar Dynamic DT252, and this is the only one you should ever buy and call it a day. Don't buy anything else ever, because everything else is a waste of time and your efforts, and that's it. See, when I make a review like that, I have one there, I have one there, I have, an, I have two ones, I have one here broken. The DT252 Briar Dynamic is the only headphones you should ever use for cello playing, period. That's it. Want to take online lessons? The DT252 Briar Dynamic. Bayer Dynamic, period. The best, period. Nothing else comes close. Like for instance, Bluetooth pedal. This Bluetooth pedal right here. The BT500, now that's on the BT500, this one right here is from uh, Airturn. The best in the world, hands down, the best. You don't ever have to go anywhere else, period. I explain it in the video. And so for this particular silent shell, there is a silent shell part. So just um, check out, but maybe she missed something. So check out my comparison of the CR versus, you know, 210. And in that video, I use my Apple Watch, my decibel reader on my Apple Watch to, to you know, hear the silentness of the cello. Hansa Cello, hello to you. You are one of the best teachers on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you, Hansa. I have heard your comments from the prior in the past. Much appreciated. I write these in. Thank you. So yes, when people think like, oh, it's silent, like, it's still going to make a, a little bit of a, 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 a sound. It's going to make a sound, <laughs> okay? Simon English, hello to you. God bless you, Simon. Um, totally agree with the pedal and the headphones, of course. He's one of the studio students, and he um, has the headphones, and they're, they're just great. What would be interesting, because he does play in a worship band, I would like to know, um, for recording, do, is this one-sided headphones good for other instruments just, or is it something that you can only find for the cello? So leave a comment to that one, because he does do some recordings with his worship band. This is so easy to understand. Thank you very much for your help. Lunar D on the how to read music on cello, open strings. You are welcome. OC3 on the electric cello on Amazon review. Again, we get it all here. It actually hurts my ears and I'm not even a professional musician. Well. Yes, yes, but it does a job. And just in this live stream earlier, a lady right here, I can bring it up too as well. And the exact same video. I still love about YouTube. It's all there to go back to and find it. Here it is. Jane Doe wrote on the exact same video um, she's just happy to have a cello after 20 years today I don't even care how low quality it may be thanks for the view video on the same cello video of the red cello and here we have now OC3 stating oh my gosh it hurts my ears I'm not even a professional musician <laughs> I do declare well of course I am, a, I am a professional, if you will. I am a teacher. And um, it's a wonderful thing to hear somebody play cello on anything. 
there's a great video out there for any of you who do have this sense of entitlement to good sound. And it's the it's an entire orchestra made of instruments uh, built from the trash heaps of a South American country. Watch that video and then see how you can compartmentalize and package your ego concerning sounds. A gecko Jesus, hello. When flying, would you carry on your Yamaha or NS cellos? Very good question. Gecko Jesus, thank you for joining the live stream. I have done both. I have flown twice over the Atlantic with my CR cello in, 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 um, pack, you know, in my hands. Um, so on, in cabin, I have flown domestically in the United States and domestically in Australia with the CR cello. Uh, in cabin, so you, it's totally possible, no questions. With the Yamaha, I did it once on international flight uh, to France, and all you have to do when you fly with instruments, just like a guitar, you should be earlier at the gate and ask, hey, they, they always have a storage closet, the, the stewards that work on the plane, and it's depending on first come, first serve, if they have the room. The lady saw me with my electric cello, I asked prior, and they said, just go to the gate, state your point, be kind, smile, be genuine, tell the truth. And if they have room, they'll put it on. In the event that they cannot, and let's say another steward says they cannot do that, because when you do bring your instrument on board to a plane, you are at the behest of the, the crew. And if they're unawares, and they're just unawares, sometimes they just simply cannot. Um, they won't let your instrument on board. This happened with Jetstar going back from Adelaide to Perth in Australia this summer with my beautiful CR cello. And um, they didn't let me check it. You know, on the way there, I used Contas, but on the way back, it was Jetstar. And Jetstar said, well, we can't do that, but they checked it. And when you check oversized, it gets personally handled. They put a fragile sticker all around it, and they personally handled it. And so, yes, I had to check my CR cello in the NS cello bag, soft carrying bag, and it was fine when it came to me because when you oversize check something, it has to be manually held. Now, concerning the United States of America, this also happened to me on my way to, from Houston to Washington, D.C., Dulles Airport on a United Airlines flight. And I was very apprehensive about this for... Years ago, if you are familiar with the world of YouTube, there was a wonderful uh, company, uh, a video called United Breaks Guitars. It was a song written by a country music band, um, sort of Tex-Mex country music band. And they broke his guitar. United um, Airlines broke, you know, broke his guitar and he wrote a song about it before the whole term viral meant viral. This became very popular and United actually reached out to the band and provided a new guitar to the guitarist. What's interesting about this, this was back in about 2008, 2007, this video came out. Fast forward to 2022, March of this year, I'm there in, the, in front there in United Airlines, there in Houston, Texas, and I'm checking everything. They look at that and they're like, well, we can't let you take that all aboard for various reasons beyond my understanding and they, you know, always be nice and smile smile and wave just smile and wave and I'm like okay so I checked it and I told him you know this is United Airlines you know they um United breaks guitars and the lady laughed at me and she says we use that video it is part of the standard training procedural operations for all United um, baggage handlers and baggage um, and just United employees. When you when you come to United and you work for customer service, you are required to watch that video. So she says every single person, whether they're flying the planes or they are in the in the in the cabin crew or handling the baggages or taking your tickets at the counter, when they work for United Airlines, they know precisely that United does break guitars and they never want to repeat that. Very bad. PR stunt again. So the result of that story, yes, my once again, my beautiful CR cello was hand-checked and oversized with, you know, fragile stickers all over it. 
and it came out exactly perfect the way it came when in, in Dulles Airport. So you do run a risk, but hey, uh, in the end of the day, when it's personally handheld, it's, it's, it's good. But it's a risk, as we all know when we fly. So, Simon, thank you for your response. Tend to use in-ears for piano and pads, but for cello, biodynamic headphones, really good. Depends on the setup. Acoustic set, a little cello in headphones is a perfect balance. And there you go, for full back. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Simon. So, in-ear um, in -ear for piano and pads, and then biodynamic for cello. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you for the super chat, Gecko Jesus. Mahalo. Mahalo. Okay, let's keep going. Snake Keeper, four months ago. Have you ever tried a Fishman app with your uh, CR5? No, I have not. Thank you for your subscription. No, I have not. Do you have any experience? on this subject? David Huckabee, on my Artino cello mute tips for safe use, you wanted to hear it. I believe in one of my other videos of the Artino uh, cello mute, I did play it, and you can hear the, the sound difference. So check out my other video. Which reminds me, I was given some some rock stops to review for the Artino company, and I have to review them, and that's going to come out in the foreseeable future. So yes, stay tuned for that one as well. Here's a 30-year-old chalice. We have a fantastic. You leave a lot of comments. The 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 Bering girl. Um, 30 year cellist still break down a piece in practice. I had this assumption that all professional cellists sit down and play any piece, even unknown compositions perfectly. And that's just not the case. <laughs> oh, you know what? You never hear the practice sessions now, do you? You never hear the practice session. That's just cool about YouTube. What's cool about this channel is it's authentic. You hear it, it's all kind of. You hear the good, the bad, the ugly. And sometimes it's ugly, like, yes. If we could only be a fly on the wall for a yo, yo, ma practice session. I know. Even the master yo, yo, ma, when he's given a new piece and he is the master, I would consider him the master of our modern time, when he's given a new piece, he's got to put some time into it, too. It doesn't bloop, pop out perfectly. <laughs> you know, there will be some adjustment. So we have a comment about what app is this. I'm going to presume on the American Tail. I'm going to presume you're talking about my app for score. And for those of you who are wondering what I use for my, my right here, this this, this right here, this is Fourscore. It's a fantastic app uh, for the iPad. So check it out, Fourscore. So we're gonna say Fourscore. And please don't spam my um my channel. Ask once, not many, but it's okay. I haven't been on the channel for a long time, so some of you have asked many questions over a period of time and gotten ah asked me too um yeah I've been knowing it for too long. So. Leon Andrin, thanks. You're welcome. You are welcome. I'm going to have to leave now. I'm four months in. And I'm going to stop there. And But I do want to... Um, I do want to talk about one particular video. Uh, burn. the comment.
There's got to be a way to search the comments. Search, here we go. Huh. All right. There's she all she all I had a video, I had a comment once from a, from B-O-R-N-O-U-T. I had a comment once from somebody who talked about burnout with me. <laughs> no, not that. And it, it really made, it really touched my heart, so. Here we go. This is it. This is it. Clay at musicallistening.com. And this is when it all started. I'm going to end with this. It all just went quiet after this. He wrote me in January 22nd, 2022. Hello, I hope you are well. Just checking on you. Not that you need it. I just noticed you are not posting as much. I imagine you are burned out but I know classroom teachers like me appreciate what you do and others during the pandemic to get students through. Music is stressful enough in any genre medium, but then to add this carnival that is YouTube in the pandemic and well, you deserve a medal. Also, you are one of the trailblazers for the rest of us trying to be on YouTube. We owe you a debt of gratitude. At any rate, take care and perhaps our cello pass will cross one day. And that's sincerely Clay the Cello Online, which by the way, I've subscribed to him and he's always posting great videos. He's a new crop of um, cello teachers online. So Clay, as a special thank you, I remember this message and I appreciate you reaching out to me very much. I was burned out. And now I think I'm rekindling it. And with that, let's see if anyone else has left a comment on the live stream. No, well, thanks for everything. Thanks, everyone, for your participation. I'm going to spell that right. I didn't even spell that right. <laughs> Whatever. I like went back and didn't and spell it correctly. Thank you, everyone, for participating on this quick little, um, yeah, yeah, no, Simon, absolutely. Thank you for participating. Subscribe, everyone. 90% of those comments that I get from you guys are from non-subscribers, but I need to earn your subscription. I want to get over 40,000 subscribers, but I have to earn it. So, Johnny, get back on it. You know, get back on it. I'm going to be doing this more often, not just these live streams, but my videos, my teaching videos. My scale book will be updated in the very foreseeable future. I've ran out of stock, so I have to finish that. And um, you're welcome, Anna and Lamb. And so, yeah, give a subscription. Give a cello coach a help and subscribe. That's really helpful to me. And, you know, maybe consider taking online lessons if you want to. Anyway, hi, Cabo Strings. Hello. And with that said, I have to prepare for my student in uh, the West Coast of the United States right now. So we're going to get, you know, going with that. As you see on my last live stream, I talked about, and I do this almost all the time, I stretch that. It's getting there. It's really getting there. What they don't talk about trigger finger is the recovery and how you do that. I had swelling this in here. It's going to get there. And I'm going to play that Legend of Zelda song, plus a whole bunch of other things. Thank you, Cabo Strings. Thank you, Monica Hilton. I always learn something new from you. Thank you. And I'll always learn something new from everyone there here on... Oh, we have a quick question. Quickly now, before, because I have to go and teach. Ask away, Cabo Strings. That's what YouTube is all about. That's what a cello teacher is all about. We are here to serve you. Hence, I have my 
customer service shirt on. This was when I had a different life in a different genre, uh, in a different world. I, w I worked in the automotive industry. I sold parts. Yes, I can build cars, <laughs> build engines. And this is what I got at Mitsubishi. So ask your question and I'm going to continue to answer these. Yeah, they answer that question because I do have to go. Do you recommend me a NS Design CR4 for less than 2000 USD? Honestly, if you cannot get the CR, which is the great instrument to get, look on reverb.com, look on eBay, look on your local Facebook markets and various things of that nature. CR cellos sometimes crop up and they and you can get them for a pretty good deal. You just got to be ready to go out there and find them. And so, but if you can get yourself a CR cello for less than 2000, do it. Go for it. Great deal. And with that, um, I'm going to say adieu, au revoir, bon dia, bon dia. I guess we're going to say have a good day. Good day. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Good day. And um, have a wonderful day and evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. Until next time. My name is Jonathan, I'm the Cello Coach, and I'll see you in the next video and live stream. Bye-bye now.